Hello and welcome to Nancy Drew, Danger on Deception Island, where we are about to head into town and meet some people. Hopefully. Um, ah, we do have a bike here. Important to wear a helmet. Um, let's go to the cafe. Katie did advise us to go there. Looks like somebody's running for harbor master. Yep. But, uh, we already knew that. Um... Hang on, I'll be right with you. Actually, I'm looking for someone named Holt Scotto. So what do you want? <laughs> I'm Holt Scotto. Okay. I'm Nancy Drew. Katie Firestone said I might be able to find you in here. Well, you're not one of them save the whale and uh, heck with everybody else crusader types like she is, are you? I... I'm just here on vacation. Her true colors came out real clear last night. Us fishermen don't count. All that matters is rescuing that poor precious orca out there. To heck with people trying to make a living. Of course, it's the way she makes her living being hurt by that whale. Why, no. Her business is booming. Now, ain't that the oddest thing? Um... She's back at the boat right now trying to fix her engine. Somebody vandalized it. She ticked off a lot of people last night. That's what she gets for being so meddlesome. Anyway, welcome to Snake Horse Harbor, home of Cadborosaurus. That's how this place got its name, you know. Who's Cadborosaurus? Well, that's the sea monster Native Americans used to see out in the channel ever so often. Called it the Snake Horse. Had the head of a horse and the body of a giant snake. People on Vancouver Island started calling it Cadborosaurus after it or one of its relatives was seen a couple of times at Cadbora Bay. They call it Caddy for short. Is it a friendly sea monster? Back in the late 1800s, he took the rap for a lot of hoodoo around here. Fog would roll in at night and men would just vanish. It was a snake horse, people would say. <laughs> Little did they know. So it wasn't the snake horse? Well, they'd been Shanghai. See, a bunch of establishments in town had secret panels built right into the walls. Guy'd be having a drink one minute, and next minute he'd be clobbered over the head, whisked into a secret passageway, and taken out to a ship waiting in the harbor. He'd wake up on the high seas and discover that if he wanted to survive, he'd better do what the captain ordered. No matter what he was before, he was now a sailor. It was a cheap way for captains to get crews back then, and an easy way for some of the town's citizens to make money. Did you say you were a fisherman? Fourth generation. I fished every ocean for just about every fish you can make money fishing for. Lived here for the last 11 years. How often do you go fishing? Every day. Only reason I'm not out there right now is because I've been in and out of campaign meetings since 8 this morning. Oh, yeah. You're running for harbor master? I think it's high time people around here started doing what makes sense instead of doing what's politically correct all the time. Harbor master we got now bends over backwards so far for the environmentalists, it's a wonder he can still walk upright. Whoever trashed Katie's boat also ruined her GPS. Oh, now that's a shame. <laughs> Doesn't sound very sincere. Um... Thing is, I'd like to go kayaking while I'm here. Only I can't without a GPS. Oh, now that really is a shame. Tell you what, I got a spare right here in my duffel. 
You know what else I got in my duffel? I have no idea. This is a little seamanship quiz I whipped up. I'm thinking about making people pass it before they're allowed to rent any kind of watercraft once I become harbor master. Here. Seamanship quiz. The idea is to cut down on having to rescue people who got no business being out on the water in the first place. Trouble is, nobody's actually taken it yet. I need a guinea pig. You mean, if I take the quiz, you'll let me borrow the GPS? If you pass the quiz, the GPS is yours. You'll need that container for the last question. Okay. See you around. Watch out for Caddy. Let's take a look at this quiz then. The sun, sun always sets in the west. What is the current fine for clamming without a permit? No idea. The left side of a boat is its... Um... Um, I don't know. The moon always rises in the... I actually have no idea on, about that either. <laughs> and we gotta know Morse code as well. I know we've had some Morse code in... I think a couple of Nancy Drew games so far. I could probably... Uh, translate this if I watched one of my videos um, with the Morse with the Morse code stuff from one of the earlier games in it. The North Star is part of what constellation? The Big Dipper. A schooner is a boat with at least two sails, masts. The name of the knot below. What kind of knot is it? A male Dungeness crab. Well, we've got our work cut out for us. I wonder if the answers are saved in here. Like, um, I wonder if we can just fill it out bit by bit instead of having to fill it all out in one go. Right. Oh, they probably are saved then. Okay, good. Um, port side. Good. Cool. The moon always rises in the. Does it rise in the east, like the sun? have to find some stuff out. The fine for clamming without a permit, the morse code thing, the no star thing, uh, knots, and then bring a dungeness crab. What can I get for you, Nancy? Since we haven't met, there's only one way you could know my name. On the day my Aunt Iris turned this place over to me, she said, Jenna, you're about to become a real good listener. And darned if she wasn't right. 
So you own this cafe? Aunt Iris left it to me three years ago. It's been in the Dublin family since the day it was built, which was back in, like, 1866 or something. So, you're visiting Katie Firestone. My condolences. Your condolences? Me and her don't see eye to eye on a couple of things. What kind of things? That orca out there should be rejoined with her pod as soon as possible. Period. End of story. No matter what Miss Fancy Schmancy science degree says, other people may be bamboozled by all her talk of data charts and field tests and monitoring whatnots, but not me. The only thing she wants is to get that whale into an aquarium. It wouldn't surprise me if Katie's been secretly feeding it. Which is against the law, by the way. And you know what else? It wouldn't surprise me if she trashed her own boat because she knew that after that meeting last night, everybody would assume that Holt did it and not want to vote for him. I got an idea. Let's change the subject. <laughs> yeah, let's. Does Andy Jason ever come in here? Everybody comes in here. Know how some people can't go a day without coffee? People around here can't go a day without a bowl of my clam chowder. In fact, if you ever want a free sample, just say the word. So Andy Jason is one of your regulars? Actually, he only comes in once or twice a week. Says he's too busy. Of Course, the reason he's so busy is because he's too cheap to hire another person to help him run the place. Kind of surprised me when I heard he was trying to buy Katie Firestone out. Must have something up his sleeves, all I can figure. What do you know about the shanghaiing that used to go on around here? It never went on, that's what I know. Shoving grown men into passageways and carting them off to ships never to be seen again? It's just a big, colorful, tall tale. Never happened. Okay. Um... Instead of the chowder, do you think I could try one of those muffins? Coming right up. Next one will be on the house, too. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, that was delicious. Here, let me get rid of that for you. Well, sure. Think I could try a bowl of your clam chowder? Coming right up. Next one will be on the house, too. Mm-hmm. Mmm, that was delicious. Here, let me get rid of that for you. It's been fun talking to you. Yeah, hasn't it, though? <laughs> Let's see. Each flag stands for a letter of the alphabet, and so do those words. Interesting. Maritime signal flags. Okay. Postcards. Dungeness Crab is one of those guys. And only the main male ones may be harvested. So, um, what's the difference? Um, reels what's the oh the the like um there's um is that the kind of the top uh, side of the crab it's different it's there's like a broader pattern here on the female so that's the only difference. Gotta pay close attention. Yeah. Good to know. Wouldn't want to be fined. And I said it and the others like it have been on the walls in here since the place was built. Interesting. We 
it's clearly some kind of a uh, code thing and uh, I've got no idea. I mean, there are things that I could just blindly try, but uh, nah. Too many possible combinations that could all make sense. Oh, that's just the that. And I guess I can't look at anything else here. Yeah. Is this the same? No, this is a different one. Nothing behind this one. Hmm. Oh, can we look at all of these in here? There's guard stuff behind here, too. And what about this one? Yep. So I guess whenever there's like one of those little sliding things there. Like uh, behind this one, there's nothing. Nothing behind this one. Yeah, because there's no sliding thing there. Is that the door that leads out? Must be. Hmm. Um. I guess. Let's go to Whale World. Meet this person, whoever it was that owns it. <gasps> oh, we didn't put the helmet on. Oops. Neglects to wear helmet, pays the price. Yeah, gotta remember to put the helmet on. Now let's go to Whale World. Hi there, welcome. What can I do you for? Are you Andy Jason? That's me. How'd you know? Friend of Katie Firestones. I'm Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Katie Firestones. I saw your business card on her boat. Nice to meet you, Nancy. Any friend of Katie's is a friend of mine. Really? Even though she keeps refusing to sell out to you? I must admit, that is a little frustrating. Maybe she just likes being in business for herself. I'm offering her the deal of a lifetime. She'd make more money, she'd have more free time. I mean, look at this place. I run a first-class operation. It's my mission to see that everyone who comes to Snake Horse Harbor leaves with a greater appreciation for marine mammals. And if I make a buck in the process, that's cool too. Yeah, well, not everything's about money. Maybe, maybe Katie does like to have her own business. Someone ransacked Katie's boat while she was in town this morning. Made a real mess. Hmm. Wonder if it's related to those burglaries. This actually looked more like vandalism. Maybe Katie came back before the thief could get around to stealing anything. Hmm. But, uh, if they were just looking to steal stuff, they wouldn't have broken so many things, now would they? What kind of stuff was stolen in those other burglaries? Food, tools, clothing, electronics. There was no sign of forced entry, no trace of who did it. Sheriff's still scratching his head. Why do you want to buy Katie out? She can't be taking that many customers away from you. I don't like her taking any customers away from me. And frankly, with this whale doing its orphan thing out there, I'm losing a lot of customers to her. 
Isn't the whale just as good for your business as it is for hers? Katie convinced the fishery service that she should be allowed to monitor the orca's condition, which means she can get right up next to the whale while my boat has to stay away. Katie takes passengers with her when she checks on the whale? Paying passengers, as many as she can safely fit. Wow. Okay. Whoever ransacked Katie's boat tore a bunch of parts out of her engine. It's like they wanted to make sure she couldn't go anywhere for a while. That's too bad. Um... Do we want to make an insinuation like this? No. Do you have any idea who would have done something like that? Jenna Deblin. Runs the Hot Kettle Cafe. She was seething at the meeting last night. She doesn't think Katie should be allowed anywhere near that whale. Has she ever done anything violent like that before? I was in the kettle once when this guy tried to sneak out without paying. Jenna was so mad and grabbed him so hard that he was the one who yelled for help. <laughs> what do you think should be done with the orca out there? Nothing. I think people should just leave it alone. I mean, why do we humans always think we know best? We can barely deal with ourselves, let alone a whole other species. Hmm. Thanks for your time. Drop by again. Let's see. 138.43. Perfect. Um, right? Whale watching, postcards. Anything else we can learn here? Whale of Fortune. <laughs> Really? Spin to win. Once you've won all the activities in the center, insert your punch card and spin the wheel. Oh, we don't have a card. Audio station. Whale talk. A whale has a larynx, but no vocal cords. But it can produce a variety of sounds from moans and grunts to chirps and whistles. Scientists aren't sure how whales make sounds, but they believe whales to do so in order to communicate with other whales. The humpback whale is famous for its songs, or repeating units of sounds, some of which go on for more than 30 minutes. Whales have an acute sense of hearing, but while... Baleen whales have tiny external ear openings. Toothed whales do not. Scientists believe that toothed whales hear or receive sound waves primarily through their lower jaws. What do whales and bats have in common? Like bats, Toothed whales are able to locate and identify objects by creating and projecting high-frequency sound waves and listening to their echoes in a process called echolocation, identical in principle to the sonar that submarines use. This biosonar allows toothed whales to likewise determine the size, shape, speed and distance of underwater objects. Baleen whales, however, apparently lack this ability. And uh, yeah, we don't we don't have a card. Humpback whale.
press the button to listen to the sounds of this mammal. The humpback whale. Average is about 43 feet in length and can weigh from 25 to 35 tons. It has very large flippers, um, but a very small dorsal fin. Like all baleen whales, it has two blowholes. When it exhales after a dive, its spray can rise to 10 to 13 feet. When diving, it humps its back distinctively. What does the common name humpback refer to? The small fatty dorsal fin near the back of the whale gives the appearance of a small hump. This hump is further e exaggerated when the whale dives, as its tail bends at a sharp angle. For these reasons, whalers called it the humpback. Dal's porpoise has a small head and a stocky muscular body. It is 6 to 8 feet long and weighs up to 400 pounds. It is the fastest swimmer among the cetaceans, reaching speeds up to 35 miles per hour. The V-shaped, forward-facing splash, or rooster tail, which it creates when swimming full speed, help, helps observers identify it. Dull's purposes appear to prefer deep, cold waters and are found only in the Pacific Ocean in the Northern Hemisphere. They are rarely found in the southern extremes of their range during the summer months. Okay. There's a lot to do here. There's a map. Killer whale habitat. So is it like this blue region or... I have no idea. Um, I wanted to look at the... Ah. Oh, here we go. What whales eat? Cetaceans that belong to the suborder Odontoceti have teeth. Among them are Dao's porpoises, which feed on squid, crustaceans, and a variety of schooling fish, and killer whales, which are at the top of the food chain. They consume fish, squid, otters, birds, sea turtles, penguins, and other cetaceans. The suborder Mysticeti includes the grey, minke, and humpback whales. These cetaceans have baleen plates, instead of teeth, and though they are bigger than Ododonoceti, <laughs> what they eat is contrastingly tiny, krill, plankton, and small fish, such as sardines and anchovies. Neither tooth whales nor baleen whales seem to have a sense of smell. Thankfully, whales don't seem to be the least bit interested in making humans part of their diet. Eating frenzy game. Oh no. We're probably going to have to play these games at some point. How whales eat. Rather than using their teeth to chew, Odontoceti use them to grab and crush their prey before swallowing it. The doll's purpose has spade shaped teeth 
While the orca's teeth are conical and pointed, the orca uses its teeth to bite chunks out of larger prey, but can swallow smaller prey, like seals and walruses, whole. Mistisetti feed by locating large concentrations of krill, plankton or fish, filling their mouths with huge amounts of water, then squeezing the water out of their mouths through the bristles of the baleen plates that line their jaws. This filters out the water and leaves their prey, which they then swallow. Most mistisetti have grooves under their chins, which allow their throats to greatly expand when feeding. Interesting. Ah, uh, let's go see what other stuff we've got here. Minke whale. Minka whale is the smallest baleen whale, averaging 25 to 30 feet in length and weighing about 6 to 7.5 tons. It has a narrow, sharply pointed snout and a sickle shaped dorsal fin. Because it starts to exhale before it reaches the surface, its spout is relatively low, rising only about 6 feet in the air. The minke whale is a sleek, torpedo-shaped whale, capable of swimming at high speeds. The common name minke is a reference to a Norwegian whaler, Meinke, who thought the minke whales he saw were actually its much larger cousins, blue whales. <coughs> Whale bones. Interactive station. We need a card for this too. Diving dynamics. Because a whale is a mammal, it cannot breathe underwater through gills like a fish. Just like you, it must hold its breath. The bigger the whale, the bigger its lungs, and the longer it can stay underwater. Orcas can stay underwater for up to 10 minutes at a time, while humpbacks can stay underwater for 30 minutes. Most whales make shorter dives, lasting anywhere from 1 to 15 minutes. Because whales usually dive in order to feed, how deep a whale dives depends on what it's hunting. All whales can dive to a depth of several hundred feet. The deepest recorded dive by an orca was 900 feet. Humpbacks regularly dive to 485 feet, while greys can dive to 390 feet. And then we have a chart on the depth. From Flipper to Free Willy, the entertainment media are full of examples of how intelligent cetaceans are. The military has been using whales and dolphins for decades, exploiting their natural ability to locate and retrieve objects deep in the water. They communicate with each other and obviously respond to human commands. The frontal lobes of their brains were thinking takes place are much larger than those of humans. This suggests that to some scientists that some cetaceans may be even more intelligent than humans. Yeah, maybe. I mean, humans as a species, we tend to be pretty arrogant when it comes to other species. And we tend to think that anything that's different from us in, is inferior to us in some way. And uh, anything that's similar to us is like uh, better. But uh, 
Um, I disagree. Things can be very different from us and very alien to us. And uh, still be like a better than us or above us. I mean, we don't know since we don't properly understand. Brain Comparison Notice how wrinkly all the brains are. The more folds and wrinkles, the larger the surface area of the brain, and presumably, the greater the capacity for thought. Notice too that an orca's brain is almost four times the size of a human's. Yeah. What do we have here? The killer whale? Orca whale is among the largest predators of mammals in existence. It is actually a type of dolphin, but because of its size it is referred to as a whale. It got its name from whalers who called it whale killer after seeing them kill and eat other whales. The two words eventually got switched around to killer whale. Orcas live in social groups called pods. Pods vary in size from 5 to 30. Females dominate the pod and maternal groups from subpods within the pod with the mothers, daughters, sisters and cousins traveling together. Members of a pod use the same vocalization system or dialect to communicate. These dialects are so distinctive that scientists can often use them to identify the pod to which an individual orca belongs. In contrast, baleen whales tend to be found singly or in loosely formed groups. And then we have this here. To keep track of individual orcas, scientists record the nicks and scars on their dorsal fins, as well as the size and shape of the grey saddle patches just beneath, just behind them. Also, adult males have tall, up to six feet, triangular shaped fins, while those of females are about three feet tall and curved. Scientists can often quickly tell to which pod an orca belongs, how old it is, and who its mother is, just by looking at its dorsal fin. And that was... actually, we have one more station here. The grey whale. Grey whale is a baleen whale with dark skin covered with grey patches and white mottling. About 45 feet long and weighing from 30 to 40 tons, it has no dorsal fin. It feeds on tiny crustaceans and tube worms found on the ocean floor. It makes one of the longest migrations of all the whales. The grey whale gets its name from the blotchy color present on its skin. This pattern is somewhat present at birth, but most of it is caused by barnacles that grow on its skin. Areas of this on the skin where barnacles have been where barnacles have been will become depigmented and turn to a dull grey color. So this was all very interesting. Um, I wonder if we can get us an activity card or something, whatever it was called.
from somewhere. Also, there's merch. Of course, there's merch. Okay, snap together. Caddy model. Miss, please don't touch that. <laughs> Sorry. I guess we can't look at the other stuff there. Can't interact with anything here, really? Nope. That's a, a pretty nice. Collection of uh, stuff. Can't interact with it either. Wow, that's a beauty. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Can't do anything with it at the moment, though. This will take us out. Of here. Hi, Nancy. That boat in a bottle you have is fascinating. It was made by one of the first non Native Americans to settle here, a guy named Benjamin Hawkins. I bought it from this lady who kind of went bonkers after her husband died. Was Benjamin Hawkins a sailor? This historian who was in here once said he was pretty sure that was a model of a pirate ship. So now I tell people Hawkins was a pirate, but like most of the settlers around here, he was probably just a farmer. Thanks for your time. Whales rule! <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. I was like, um, how do we get out of here? All right. Let's see what our friends have to say. Now that we've Party talked res, to Joe some speaking. people. Hey Joe, it's me. Hi Nancy, what's going on? I get the feeling that even though Katie lives and works in Snake Horse Harbor, she's still pretty much an outsider. Why do you say that? Because frankly, nobody around here seems to like her very much. Like who? Like Jenna Devlin, the woman who owns the Hot Kettle Cafe. Why do you think she doesn't like her? Um... She's convinced that Katie wants the orca captured instead of returned to her pod, and it drives her up the wall. Uh-oh. When emotions run high, so does the probability of bad behavior. Keep an eye on that one, Nancy. I could sure use some hints when it comes to that seamanship quiz. You might try searching around on that laptop of yours. To find a live male crab, though, I'm pretty sure you'll have better luck elsewhere. As for question number two, you're gonna have to go see the world. Talk to you later. Be careful. And have fun. Uh, yeah, we already got question two. Um, let's call Bess and George as well. Hello? Hi, Bess. Can you talk? Hey, Nancy. Of course I can talk. I think she just wanted to make sure nothing on the stove was in danger of igniting. Everything's safely on simmer. What's up? Mmm. Oh, several things. Wow. Um... I can't figure out if Andy Jason is friendly for real, or if it's because he's basically a salesman. What does he sell? Whale watching tours. He keeps trying to talk Katie into selling her company to him and becoming his business partner. Think he wrecked her boat so she'd have to go into business with him? Hmm... 
I doubt it. I don't think someone was trying to wreck Katie's boat. I think they just wanted to mess it up to teach her a lesson. But still, I wouldn't trust him, Nan. Once a salesman, always a salesman. Remember my neighbor, Ray Olaf? He was a salesman, but he quit. Yeah, to go to work for a company that repossesses pets when people can't pay their vet bills. She's right. Don't trust him. <laughs> um... Jenna Devlin went ballistic when I brought up the subject of Katie and the whale. What's her problem? Mm. She's convinced that Katie just wants to study the whale, not really help it. Sounds like a candidate for your suspect list to me. Holt Scotto and whoever vandalized Katie's boat seem to be fond of the word metal. It's not exactly a word you hear every day. It's not exactly hard proof either. What else did this Scotto guy have to say? He's tired of environmentalists always getting their way. Like with that orca. Do you think he has a point? I can see why he's upset. I mean, that whale is making it difficult for fishermen like him to make a living, yet nobody seems to care. Must be very frustrating. The bottom line is, he had a motive for vandalizing Katie's boat. Don't turn your back on him, Nan. You know, Jenna Devlin may have her faults, but being a bad cook isn't one of them. What kind of stuff does she cook? She's famous for her clam chowder, which is outstanding. Well, don't just stand there. Get me the recipe. <laughs> if you ran a cafe and had a great recipe for something, would you give it away to anyone who asked for it? I didn't say ask for it. I said get it. You're sneaky. Aunt Iris probably left it to her with instructions to keep it in a vault somewhere. Does Jenna own the cafe or just run it? She inherited it. The place has been in the Devlin family for centuries. Whoa. Buildings that old are usually haunted, you know. Oh, boy. Here we go. Well, they are. I could sure use some hints when it comes to that seamanship quiz. Check out the URLs in the search engine on the Deception Island portal page on your laptop. I bet you'll find everything you need there. Except for a live male crab, of course. Head to the beach by the lighthouse for that one. And for question number two, go see the world. Whale world, that is. I better get going. Whale be in touch. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's go back to the boat. And then um, I think I'm going to end the episode there. We'll find the answers to the um, the questions we still need to find answers for in the next episode. And then let's see what can we. Oh, this is just to go to the boat. I see. Well, I guess we could take a look at what we can find over here. Oh, that's the kayak. And that's the equipment that we need in order to go kayaking. But we gotta get the GPS first. Guess we could talk to Katie. What's up? Before we end the episode. Yeah, we do have quite a few things to talk to her about. I talked to Jenna Deblin when I was at the hot kettle. What nasty rumor is she spreading about me today? Why would she spread rumors about you? She thinks I'm a know-it-all from the big city. Sounds like Holt Scotto was one of the people who didn't care for what you had to say last night. He and I never see eye to eye. Now, if I were a fisherman, I'd be right as rain no matter what nonsense came out of my mouth. Fine harbor master he'd make. I saw a boat in a bottle at Andy Jason's place. He said it was made by a guy named Benjamin Hawkins. As a matter of fact, I've done some research on Hawkins. He settled here in the mid-1800s lived in a cabin where the lighthouse is now. What else have you found out? He apparently had a major feud going with some sea captain. 
Hawkins would see the guy sail on the horizon, grab his family and all his valuables, and go into hiding for days. Oh. Where would they hide? Nobody knew. Rumor had it that the sea captain was an ex-pirate, which might explain why Hawkins hid. But where he hid is still a mystery. See you in a bit. Enjoy. Alright, let's get to the cabin. And uh, yeah, in the next episode we'll go do some digging on the uh, computer there for the answers that I still haven't filled out in the quiz here. And then I guess we're also going to the lighthouse to see if we can find one of those male crabs and uh, catch it, obviously. For now though, thank you so much for watching and spending a little of your time with me here today. If you like this video, please leave it a like, I would really love that. And also, please remember to be kind to yourself. Have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you again next time. <laughs>